It's really good to be back, to be able to share some more of our story, and it's been a great story. We've had to find ourselves in some interesting circumstances that we didn't really plan on. You have a very idealistic plan of what life's going to be, and some things kind of jump up. And But the one thing we did know, <clears throat> excuse me, was the fact that we love Jesus, and the fact that we wanted to follow Him, and to know Him, and <clears throat> excuse me, and that just kept growing inside of our lives. So the setting... Again, it's something that God put in Kathy's heart some time ago, just a few weeks ago, that she would love to tell our story in this blue room. And the blue room was where Reese Howells and spent most of his time interceding. And the, many of the events during World War II found themselves being changed by the Spirit of God using a group of intercessors. And it was in this room where I found myself picked up after the first reading of the book, and I stood in this room. And God gave me a real mandate and a call to spend a life of prayer. And that was something that was so powerful. So this room is very special to us because it was the place where intercessions went up for the laborers to be touched and the workers to be brought into the kingdom to see the gospel of the world. And we know we were affected by those intercessions. So this became a very precious room where we spent a lot of time with Samuel House, Reese House son. And so Kathy just had it on her heart to share the story here, so here we are. So, yeah, we were very touched by the person of the Holy Spirit and just this understanding of the fact that he had more for our lives. And this story continues with the standpoint of we just fell in love with Jesus. And one of the things that God really said to us early on in that experience was Psalm 37.4. When God gave us one day, and he was waking us up, giving us book, chapter, verse. And this is one of them. He says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And that became our passion. That became, we don't know what, what's happening to us. We know he's leading us, and we want to delight in him. So he's going to be our delight, and he's going to give us the desires of our heart. So it went from just absolutely not knowing what was happening to finding out because we were delighting in him. So, what would you like to share about those things? <laughs> it was a delight, you yeah. know, and it still is a delight. And I think that's one reason, you know, that I wanted to so be here. Because yeah. I just, I just delight being here. Yeah. I, I feel touched by God and a group of people yeah. that so impacted our life and impacted the world and events of the world. And, you know, uh, I just feel so grateful every, yeah. every time. Uh, to God, number one, but but to those people, mm -hmm. and because uh, I'm alive today because of that, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, know Him as I know Him today. Mm -hmm. uh, ahead of that, I didn't know I could know Him like I know Him yeah, now. That's true. So that's, true. that's that's been a delight. Yeah. It's been a delight, and uh, you know, sometimes we share some of the struggles because I think that's important. It's real. It's life, and what do you do when you hit them? Mm -hmm. But uh, I just look back and what a privilege, what a delight it's been, yeah. you know. Uh, the gain is so much more, so yeah. much more, so much more. So, uh, yeah, it was, I think when he gave us that, I mean, he was directing our hearts, number one, and letting us know, you know, he cares. Yeah. Uh, and how much he's involved in every aspect of our lives. But it was just little things sometimes that were just, fun to watch unfold right. and uh, one of them uh, my mother was uh, there visiting and I was pretty sick so that was hard on her and uh, we were sitting at the table and uh, well maybe I should back up first of all uh, one day uh, God told me to I believe for a dishwasher well I'm now trying to get well you know <laughs> about a dishwasher but anyway, so I did, and, and I felt, don't tell anybody, you know, except you. So I told you, I said, God said, don't tell anybody. And uh, so we just, okay, God, well, thank you for the dishwasher, and uh, moved on. But Mother was sitting at the table that day, and we got this call, and uh, somebody asked us from a store, you know, what kind of appliances, what color, blah, 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 and we just kind of looked at each other like, hmm, and... Uh, then, I guess it was, I don't know, a day or two later, she was still there, and um, she hadn't stepped into the things of the Spirit yet. And, uh, but she was 
so encouraging and went with us with our decisions and trusting God. But uh, we were sitting there and somebody knocked. So Sam goes to the door <laughs> and there's the box and this delivery man and he said, you know, this is for Sam and Kathy Matthews. And Sam said, I didn't order anything. And then he realized, yeah, you did. <laughs> but it was the dishwasher. Yeah. And um, so it was fun for us. But I mean, all along, it was just fun, the impact that right. that had on Mother right. and the impact that it had on Mother's. I mean, nothing escapes right. him yeah. that is a part of something that, that we need, that we want. And, and um, so, you know, just, just little things. So we, we just kept delighting ourselves and we've lived like that forever. Yeah, now. and the interesting thing further about that story is the fact that we said, well, who sent this? And they said, well, we don't know who sent it. And there was a card there yeah. And he said, this is what we have. And I opened it up. And the only thing the card said was Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Which and that had been our confession it. through that whole yeah. series of days of those sickness. Yeah. And became just a whole motto of our life. I was just telling Kathy, I mean, I've done this for years. But uh, just having been in Japan and they just translated my book, Apostolic Teams, into Japanese. And so... They were selling them, and they were wanting me to sign, and we were signing for all these people, and that's what I would put in there was Psalm 37, 4, because I want everybody to get captured by the Holy Spirit to realize that that's the essence, that you know that's how we do these things. So yeah, so in the midst of that whole sickness, in the midst of those things, God gave you a promise out of Psalm 40, and really moved on you in that. So yes. won't you share yes. some of that with us? Yes. You want me to turn there? Yeah. One okay. of the things that. God just tends to deal with me. He, he'll always speak to me, you know, with what he wants to do. Right. And he'll give me a scripture usually. Um, and in the scripture, sometimes it's a process, sometimes it's not, but it, it puts a definition, right. though I had never understood the definition of what he was doing until after, and sometimes the revelation of what he has done increases even years after as you see fruit coming up in other aspects. So, but uh, a purpose and uh, what, he's, what he's doing and then what he did. Right. And uh, so that was just something that um, we didn't talk about as much um, another time that I just, I wanted to be sure that right. I honored him right, in right. such a way. Yeah. Um, because I do honor him, you know, and, yeah. and I, it was just, just wonderful. Um, but in Psalm 40, it says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay. He set my feet upon a rock, making my, firm, my footsteps firm. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. And uh, that's what he said he was going to do. And so, you know, when uh, he first started speaking to me, and I knew there was some conditions and, you know, beloved, I wish above all that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. But he prospered my soul. But one thing he said to me that same uh, morning when he spoke those words to me was, I'm not just going to heal you for you to feel good. I'm going to heal you from my glory. Well, I had no idea right. what that meant. Uh, but there's some of that in this passage. Right. But I found that the things in my life that were not directed by the Spirit, that had never yet been touched in me, of the Spirit that I didn't even know I had needs in, mm -hmm. you know, those things he changed yeah. in the process of so showing up and show giving of himself to me. Yeah. Like the life would just come in and, you know, I would be, I would be positioned right. in different ways and uh, in new ways. So it was a it was a it was a beautiful, delightful right. thing because I would get more of him all along right. and uh, experience so many, so many wonderful yeah. things. So uh, you know, uh, delighting herself in him is just so important. I mean from little things to huge things. Um, he's worthy of it all. But uh, what I found was 
you know, and, and I've shared stories, but sometimes where, you know, well, don't ask anymore, you know, just just praise me for it. There was He did put a new song in my mouth. Right. You know, it was a song of praise. And I don't think I was ever a big negative person right. uh, or a complaining kind right. of person, really. But, you know, I wasn't full of the life of God and living in that right. uh, aspect of it yet. So uh, I found he healed my soul. He right. gave me a new outlook on all kinds of things. And it was yeah, just, but we, we had no understanding of what real praise was. I no. Mean, was to, no. to lose yourself in that and to magnify him, and it was something that no, he no. just kept leading us into. Yeah. You know, and it, like a new song. Yeah. We yeah. didn't know he could put a new song in our no, mouth. We didn't no. know that he could have that kind of release and that his word would come alive in us. So it became very special. Became very special, yeah. very special. And uh, so anyway, uh, what I found at the end of it that I just I just stand amazed at today uh, is that you know he really did put my feet upon a rock right. and uh, you know not only was I not shaken I was healed uh, then he said many would see in fear right. and put their trust in God right. and you know whether it's been you telling the stories or whether it's been me, it's gone all over the world. In the years we had over on television, yeah, shared those things, and it's it's gone so many places. Yeah, it's so many people, yeah. you know, have turned to God in a, yeah. in a different walk and, and affected other lives, and and uh, so you know, at the time I thought, well, okay, I'll stand up in the congregation, the great congregation, and say, hey, he healed me, you know, I can do that, but I didn't know, you yeah. know the depth of where he could take his right, victory right. that had been lived out in this. And uh, so it was, it's just, it's very precious to me. And that's why this room is precious to me. Right. Yes, when I come here, uh, I'm reminded of all the victories that yes. I didn't even know were possible till we read the book, right, right. Rick Intercessor. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but then having lived amongst some of the people for all of the visits we made and, and being touched by their lives in the book, you know, it's, I, I'm just so grateful. Yeah. I am so grateful. And uh, so, it, it, you know, testimony is important, and uh, we know that. Uh, but if those testimonies hadn't been recorded right. for me, for us to read, True. you know, our life might have been totally different. Right. But they helped move us on, so right. I'm just still standing on the rock saying many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord and they will share stories. They will have their own testimonies of how God moved yeah. mightily and uh, it'll keep affecting other people all over the world. And uh, so that's my cry. And uh, I just, he's, he's just so, so wonderful and so, so good, so good. Uh, so I just uh, kept putting my trust in him. And, uh, <laughs> What can I say? Well, I can't <laughs> He's either. trustworthy. He's trustworthy. But God is good. God is we can good. say that. And uh, that's that's what we came out at right. that time saying. God is good. I mean, when I, oh, God's good. No, God is good. Uh, you know, <laughs> overwhelmingly, eternally, wonderfully good. And uh, He still is. And so, sharing anything, you know, I know when I get touched again and I feel the goodness of God just coming all around, right. you know, that other people will also be touched by that goodness of God and come to know Him in that way. And, uh, so, you hear the cry that's coming from <laughs> Kathy, that that's her desire, and it's not just her desire, it's the desire that God put there with those verses, yeah. because in the midst of the sickness, yeah. that's when He said, this is what's going to happen, and you look at it and you go, I'm one sick little girl, you know, lying in a little bedroom. But this is what God says is going to happen as a result of walking through these things, looking to Him with faith. And it's a, yeah. it's a great, great opportunity to be able to see and to know those things. It is. Yeah. It is. So what else? It is. So, <laughs> you know, that marked our lives, changed yeah. our lives, set us on a great course of just knowing Him, knowing His goodness. And, uh, but, uh, as we're going to talk some about another time and another uh, intercession that we found ourselves in. Um, you know, 
what I found, and God is so good, you know, I couldn't have done the second one right. without what he did in us the first right. time. Right. Because when I kept, went into the second one, my feet were on the rock, right. and I knew they were on the rock. Right. And, you know, that's an immovable place. Right. It's a place of victory. And uh, yeah. so, you know, uh, so going into to the next one, um, that just became paramountly important. Right. And uh, I'm so, so thankful. Uh, yeah, and what she was very interesting there is the fact that when this second intercession, which the first one we're talking about 75 and 76, this one had been a lot of other intercessions in the years following, but then these were ones that really marked us in ways that were very significant for the spread of the gospel around the world. And um, But when this hit, one of the things that God said to me first off, because she was administrator of our Christian school, she's there every day, she's very involved, she's overseeing everything throughout the ministry, and then all of a sudden she's not going to show up the next day, and God really said, don't tell people what's happening right now. But he said, you just tell them you're standing on him who is your rock. It's very interesting. I mean, at the time, we did not think about Psalm 40. That wasn't in our thoughts. But yet the Spirit of God, that's the God that's present, was giving us the next statement. Don't tell people what's going on. Just tell them you're standing on, we're standing on him who is our rock. Well, so that next morning, I went to school, I went in there, and everybody's going, well, where's Kathy? And I said, well, we're standing on him who is our rock. And they said, well, we know that, <laughs> but what's, what's happening with Kathy? Is she okay? I said, we're standing on him who is our rock. That's all I can say. And they said, well, is she okay? Well, she can understand. They're questioning. And I would just say, we're standing on him who is our rock. And they just kind of look at me and go, wow. But yet, there again, he had positioned her years before on the rock. And then in this situation, that became the declaration we made, not realizing how important that was other than this is what the Father is saying. So a little bit about that intercession, God had been dealing with us about the nations, interceding for the nations. We had started the church, uh, this Christian school, and with the whole understanding of this is for raising up laborers. We're going to train laborers to be ready to go to the nations. And so consequently, we threw ourselves into that and some of the nations started opening up. We started coming to the Bible College in 1987. That relationship with Samuel Howes, Reese Howes' son was developing and he was becoming a very strong spiritual father to us. And uh, so it was just a great time. But we had, we, there were three intercessions that God gave me. And one of them he had given some years before, but he said, you can't touch it until I tell you you can touch it because you don't have the faith to touch this. And he gave some instruction of some things he would want to see happen before we did. So, but the three intercessions where we were coming against the antichrist spirit of various religions, and that works the thing that pushes things away from Christ. One of them was uh, we were praying against the antichrist spirit of Roman Catholicism. Number two was breaking of the sword of Islam. And number three was the marriage of Judah and Ephraim, all the promises of Israel coming into maturation, coming into fulfillment. So those are the three. They're pretty large intercessions. And so we understood, or thought we had did, you wait until I tell you to do this. So there came a point at the end of 1988 that God said you're to step into those things. So we started fasting, we started praying, and... So that was great. One night, Kathy's in our bedroom praying. I'm in the living room praying. It's late one night, and all of a sudden, she starts crying out in excruciating pain. I mean, it's just a, a cry, an unbelievable cry of pain. I go running into the bedroom, and blood is gushing from her rectum. And there's just blood going every direction. The bad thing to talk about, it was a pretty bad experience. So I immediately began, you begin to do those things that you know to do practically with towels trying to, you begin to pray, you begin to ask the Father, you know, God heal this, you know, God, 
we come against this, we rebuke this. But one of my greatest questions is, God, what's happening? What are you saying? What do we need to know right now? And uh, so as we're going through this and we're trying to figure this out, we're trying to contain this bleeding. Do I go to the emergency room? Do I not go to the emergency room? Where are we? What's happening? Speak. So all of a sudden, I start feeling this presence of God. Kathy's on the bed. This incredible presence, this weighty presence of God that just starts, you, you felt him enter the room and you felt that this presence was just coming down in the room. And I didn't think about bowing. The weightiness of the presence of God, when it got to the top of my head, it just began to bend me. And I didn't go ahead and go, it just it literally, that weightiness just took me to the, slowly as it came down, took me to the floor. But when that presence got to the level of the bed, Kathy's crying out and crying out in pain. That crying out starts to just go down until I'm on my face on the floor and she's quiet. And I'm going, wow, God, you're here. What's happening? Uh, is this over? You know, is she okay? And I have no idea how long that period was. I have no point of reference. But we just, we knew that there was just such holiness. And then after a while, that presence began to lift. I just, the same way it came in, and about the same speed it began to live. When it got to the bed height, she started again crying out in pain. And it just kept going up and going up, and the presence left the room. And so she's crying out in pain again. I get up, there's more blood that's running. And God tells me, go in and get some handwritten notes that you had of some of Reese Howe's statements and teachings. And I had been studying from some of those. Well, they weren't numbered when they were given to me, and I had numbered each page. And so when I went in there and picked up that stack, God said, look at page number such and such. So I looked at that. I turned to God, found that page, and I looked right at a sentence. I didn't start reading. I looked at one sentence, and it said this. God can only use a man as far as his faith can take him. God can only use a man as far as his faith can take him. And I just dropped those things to my side, those papers, and I said, God, I don't want to play those rules. I don't want it to depend on me. You know, and God said, no. I said, you know, this is what it is. He says, you are in a race with death. And either faith will make it there first or death will make it there first. And he said, this problem is not a physical problem, although it had very physical symptoms. He said, it is a spiritual attack being brought by those spirits that we have reached out to touch. That's what is happening. So he said, if you take her to the doctor, I mean, I'm hearing all this as I'm saying, he said, if you take her to the doctor, they will not be able to determine why it's happening. They will not be able to do anything to stop it and she would die. They, they, there's nothing they're going to do because it can't be taken care of in the natural. So he said, if you will do what I've taught you to do, I will walk you through this. So I don't know anything to do except to pray in the Spirit and read the Word and fast. Those three things that build faith you know, that's what I've been telling, that's the way we've been living, but I've been telling people, people say, well, I have this problem, this problem, what do I do? I say, you need to pray in the Spirit so many hours a day, and you need to read the Word. He said, well, that's great, I know that, but what do I need to do? I said, you need to pray in the Spirit, and you need to read the Word. And people go, well, what if I get tired of praying in the Spirit and reading the Word? I said, it's simple, read the Word and pray in the Spirit. But that's what you have to do, because that brings in God, that brings in the mysteries, that... That brings him in. And we had mysteries facing us. And I needed to know what heaven was saying about it. But he said, if you'll do what I taught you to do, he said, I will walk you through this. And then he said this, you don't have the faith to break this spirit of death. Now, what I always like to share there is, I could have been arrogant and said, oh yeah, I have the faith. Because I had the faith and I got her through that in 1975. I have the faith. 
but it was at a totally different position. It was a totally different level, touching thrones, dominions, at a whole new level that we had not done before and in measure, but this was a whole new place that God was taking us into. So anyway, he said, yeah, this is what you need to do. You're in a race with death. And so that set us out. I mean, she suffered for just under four months and uh, agonizing pain and God would speak to us. I mean, sometimes I would be walking, praying in the spirit. God, what are you saying? And he would give me another nation to intercede on. One night he gave me four nations, and I said, God, I can't, I can't take it anymore. It's right. I mean, this is almost killing us now. How, how are you adding? We're trying, we're trying to get through these, and you're adding more nations. We can't do this. You know, it was, that was my humanity. Well, I can't, I can't. But anyway, I said, okay, you're giving them to me. Then I'm going to take these nations on, and I'll start interceding. Because one thing that he said to us that I left out a moment ago was. When I went in there and looked at those handwritten notes, he said, you can't pray for me to heal her. You can only pray for the nations. Only pray for the nations. Because it's not, it's not, she doesn't need healed. Those powers need to be broken. Those powers that are holding those nations, that's what he was after to pray. And uh, so that began that process of just, uh, yeah. So he also said, if you, if you try to save her life, you're going to lose it. But if you lose your life, for me, then you're going to you're going to find it. Now, we knew that verse. But all of a sudden, that verse took on an incredible personal element of, it's not just a verse that we say amen to. This is, I can't save her life by praying for her life. I can only save her life by praying for the nations. So that's what we told people. We said, we can't, we can't pray for Kathy's healing. We can't pray... For her to heal, it's not a healing. It, it, these powers have to be touched. That's what we have to touch the powers. And we have to break no, that hold. But it's the, all the people that are going to be set free. You know? And if you just think, I mean, from 1989, the end of 88 into 1989, when this was all happening, I mean, the, the world further began to open up. I mean, the Islamic world, I mean, there's more people started coming to Christ during that time frame in these years that have followed because of those intercessions. Now, we're, we're some of millions that pray and are interceding to see people come out of darkness into the true message of Jesus Christ. But that's where he asked us to walk. That's what he asked of us. He's asked other things of other people. And we just sought to be faithful to see those things happen. And it was an incredible story. You're ready to say something. What would you like to say? Well, it reminded me of uh, the next morning after God had so walked in, right. which to me... He just, he walked into the intercession. You know, it was, it was so much bigger than us. Yeah, yeah. He just, he walked into it. So there was an aspect, uh, yeah, we were carrying things and fighting, but yeah. it was, he was, he was there, he was doing this. But uh, the next morning, uh, he got a phone call, and um, it was from a prophetic brother, uh, who I never had even yeah, met. Yeah, I had uh, but Sam had done several things with him. And, uh, but he called with a word that morning. And this is after, you know, Sam started all of this from God. And uh, he called in the essence of the word. Um, I don't have it with me. I didn't have it written down. I've saved it. But uh, the essence of the word is that when this spirit of death is broken, that it will be a sign and a seal that the nations will begin to open right, right. and uh, it's exactly right. what we saw yeah. but again it confirmed yeah. you know right. we are not crazy you know yeah. <laughs> we are not uh, you know moving anywhere except in him and his yeah. direction yeah. And, uh, great you know, confirmation it was great confirmation yeah. great confirmation yeah because we had we had people leave the church we had people from either, I mean, even other churches coming and prophesying to me when they heard what was happening. You know, Kathy's going to die. This is wrong. This is heretical. God doesn't do this kind of stuff. I said, God didn't do this. You know, we're touching, we're touching these powers. These powers are touching back, and we're, and He wants us to break those powers. And you know, it's a, I remember one day I was talking actually to this brother she mentioned, and. Uh, just because he was wanting to know how further Kathy was doing. He was engaged in these intercessions for the nations. That had been his life. And uh, 
while I'm talking to him, all of a sudden I get this vision of St. Bartholomew's Day many, many years ago when the Huguenots were slaughtered in mass, over 50,000 Huguenots that were destroyed. And I saw that bloodbath, and I just saw the bloodbath. Well, she's bleeding. She's still bleeding. You know, so she's losing an immense amount of weight. I mean, not where, yeah, she was weight, but, uh, but blood. But I saw that bloodbath, and I just had to get off the phone because they went in this deep travail, you know, against that spirit, against that spirit that had so stopped the very flowing of the gospel. And so, anyway, there was those kinds of experiences where he would just show us certain things. But I, again, it wasn't just that he gave us this one instruction. It was that he would show us, no, that spirit that did that is what you're reaching out to touch. And thus it's touch, reached out to touch you. And it was an incredible journey that we, and it was so uncharted. I mean, we had never been at that level where you couldn't pray for healing. You could only pray for the nations. And if you did, if you let your humanity get in the way, you're actually going to negate the very thing that you're wanting because he doesn't, he's, he wants this. He wants the nations to be touched by his grace. So it was an incredible, wonderful journey of, again, finding him in the midst of, of these things. When you realize this is, this is him, this is what he's doing, and this is something that is not just affecting us, it's affecting millions of people into billions of people. And of course, Samuel Howes was involved praying with us in this. We'd already been to Bible college several times, and he knew of this. And um, It was just a, a wonderful time of knowing. And in those days after we came through this, and we'll talk about this, when Samuel Howes told me one day for a walk, he said, Sam, he said, just like, and this was after the Berlin Wall had gone down and the USSR was unraveling, which had been such key intercessions for Samuel Howes and this group of intercessors. We were walking one day by the ocean and he told me, he said, Sam, he said, just as God used my father to stop the fascists with Hitler and Mussolini and those, he said, and has been using me to see the USSR unravel, of course, these intercessions for China, all the Bible distribution that, that he had done through the years. He said, to be able to see that, he says, I can't tell you. He said, I was prepared to die never seeing it, but believing it to be so. But to see it, he says, is one of the greatest fulfillments. I cannot tell you what one feels. And they never use the eye, they never use the personal. But I would say, you, 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 I cannot tell you what one feels, you know, to, to see it. But he said, just like we, my father saw this, we've seen this. He said, you and Kathy have been touched by God to see these things of Islam broken, that the people would come out of the darkness to come to the light. And so again, it became a real confirmation to have people of that stature and people that had no stature except in the presence of God praying with you, you know, and believing with you. And because they knew we're standing on him who is our rock and they had seen, you know, so many things and heard the testimonies. And, uh, you know, one of the nations that God gave me that one night that, I uh, didn't want that he, he's been able to give us the privilege to go into that nation and go into some tribes that have never heard the gospel. And, you know, I've been able to walk there and see those people and see if, you know, one, one night 90% of this tribe of 270 people all come to Jesus and see him absolutely forsake everything that had bound them for centuries, you know. And uh, they never had had schooling. They didn't know anything. They'd never seen light bulbs, they'd never seen airplanes, they were just deep in the jungles. And it's, uh, but it was marvelous when you know that these things open those things, and there's more to those stories. But uh, yeah, so what did God further say to you once in some tremendous pain? <laughs> to think which one? Yeah, which one? Yeah. yeah. But, oh, yeah. yeah, it's so very... Um, But it's so connected. I, I don't know how else to put it. You, um, uh, I'm thinking one thing when uh, I can no longer eat. and um, Yeah, because she went without eating for 50 days. Yeah. But immediately, you know, when I knew that that was the situation and, um, and been confirmed that that was the situation, but uh, immediately what came out of me, I just said, I declare fast. Yeah. You know, you're not going to do this. 
because we're fighting powers and yeah. principalities. Mm -hmm. He said, I declare fast. And uh, so, I mean, I was sustained very beautifully. Um, but uh, one of the times, and, and this was a real, real cry, <laughs> Sam was at church and uh, doing the service, and I got hit really hard. And um, like I was lying on the bathroom floor, so it kind of lets you know how hard I got hit. But anyway, I just, I just started crying, and um, and when I did, I saw Calvary. <laughs> and uh, when I saw Calvary, what came out of me was, if you can do that, I can do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I never cried again. Yeah. Uh, I still had pain at times, but uh, but you know, it, it was just. I was so conscious, you know, that I was involved in something eternal, something that was, you know, going to enable many people to come to Jesus, and, and um, it was it was beautiful. Yeah. But but seeing Calvary, you know, one of my most beautiful encounters. Yeah, it was um, life life changing oh, because my, my. she had reached her end as far as being able to physically, just emotionally, Hang on. handle the pain. Yeah. You know, she thought, I just can't do this, even though she knew what it was. But when he showed her Calvary, it changed everything because it was like, you know, and, and she did. She never, she never cried again. I mean, and she was in agonizing pain, but it was just something was settled because she realized, no, this is true. I mean, it's like beholding yes. like Jesus did in Gethsemane. Yes. I mean, Father, if you can take this, great, but I want what you want, and that's what she wanted. Yes. Delighting to do his will. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And you're gonna get me. <laughs> do what? You may make me cry. I may make you make me cry, yes. Yeah. But we found him to be oh. Yeah, in this intercession, the first one we've said, and we said it already in the first uh, filming and we said it again now, but we came out of that nineteen seventy five intercession saying God is good. This one in eighty nine, we came out declaring God is faithful. That's, faithful. That's what we found. God is faithful. And because we found he was faithful. Yes. And not just because we were getting everything we wanted when we wanted it. It was the fact that he had set us on a course. And years before, we realized that our whole lives had become intercessions. It wasn't just that we, okay, we have prayer time in our life or we have our meditation in our life. It's the fact that, no, everything we're doing was on a course that there was something that it was producing to fulfill the kingdom of God. And it became very, very special. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. So you're delighting to do his will. I'm delighting to do his will. So he put that in my heart. You yeah. know that was uh, part of the fortieth psalm. I didn't read it, that part of it, but uh, uh, the the momentary light affliction, two things. The momentary light affliction did produce an eternal weight of glory. Right. Yeah. And we saw it, and we we were living in that after the first intercession. Right. And spirit could take that and whenever he wanted to however he wanted to could use it in those intercessions so it was it was beautiful um, and uh, so you know again a little more understanding of what it means you know to really give him glory and um, but uh, coming out of that and coming out of this this second one uh, that just became stronger and stronger as we'd see nations open up and we'd see you do things and oh my, you know. Uh, uh, after this one, I was amazed sometimes because we'd be someplace and somebody that I didn't know, you know, would come up to me and but they were intercessors and they knew of me because you were out traveling. But um, they would come up. And they would tell me things that they couldn't have known except by the Spirit of right. God that were happening and how he engaged them, yeah. you know. Right. And, you know, it makes you so thankful. And, right. you know, we just don't. When he speaks something, I mean, it, it really carries right. with it. And when we share his sufferings, it really carries a weight of glory. And it's, it's amazing. Um, something that has happened to me this last uh, trip to the Bible college that um, is where I, I can get overwhelmed real easily. 
but it's like everything about our life and because we've become intercession I guess is the best way right. to put it because that's what he's doing and we're connecting with him but um, I've every morning we had a group of people here uh, on a tour but every morning you know I never made it down to breakfast because when it would get when you would leave <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Thank you. And I would leave. God would go. I hear precious. Oh my. Yes, go on. Oh, you laugh it up. That's what happened. I mean. But I just found myself, whether it was in the blue room too, because I would come in here when I could sneak in right. just by myself. Um, but uh, just. My own personal times with him, and it was just honoring, just loving, just loving him and loving him and loving him. And I couldn't tell him enough how much I loved him, and uh, I still can't. But in those those mornings, every morning, I would just, you know, I, I just love you. I love you so much. You know, I just love you. And uh, of course, I would feel so much love. But here's one thing. I mean, and this has been several years now. But uh, in that week, it was the, I don't remember what day it was. I was pretty out of it when I went down. But uh, all of a sudden. It was Tuesday. It was, it was Tuesday, of course. <laughs> it was Tuesday. It was Tuesday. Oh, my. <laughs> it was Tuesday. So I'm just up there loving on him. Just loving him. I mean, just loving him. And uh, Loving the way he loves me, you know, telling him, but just loving him, loving him. And, uh, but what I heard was, it's written in my book in heaven that I would like to do this with you. Amen. And that was one of the promises of heaven. And, uh, and to have God tell you But to have him yeah. tell me, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. I'm just going, because I do want to do his will, you know, and I delight. To do his will, um, but uh, just it was just precious. That is precious. It's precious. Yeah, some years after this intercession, one of our teachers actually called me in the hallway one day and said, "Sam, how is it that you and Kathy just always do whatever God asks you to do? That it makes no difference. No, you don't worry about what's going to happen or not happen. You just do. How do you do that?" And I just looked at her and thought. I don't know that I have an answer to that question. I never thought of it was like that. We've just done it. I said, I don't know. I, I want to think about that. So I did for a couple of days. I mean, not nonstop thinking about it, but I'd think about it and go on with doing a lot of other things. And But I came back to her and I said, you know, I think it all boils down to one thing. We just love him. Yeah. We just love him. So if he's really our Lord, if he's really our master, then we just want what he wants. And the whole thing of the intercessions, I mean, intercession is something, I mean, he, he, he captured our lives because he is the great intercessor. And he's at the right hand of the Father forever making intercession. That's what he does. So if I really become one with him now in this life, then I am going to be involved with him in these intercessions. I can't keep from it because that's who he is. That's what he does. So I... Uh, it's not just some kind of nice experience. It's the fact that is what he's doing, those intercessions. He's trying to bring the kingdom into the manifestation within the earth and so yeah, those things. So it's good. Yeah. 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 But we love him. We just love him. Yeah. We just love him. Yeah. And he's all together lucky. And he's all together <laughs> lucky. Oh my. Oh my. That's oh true. My. So, you know, seeing Calvary here and that, you know. I know my life's not in vain, you know. Right. And the stuff, yeah. you know, it just wanes in so much significance yeah. uh, because every victory produces something in the spirit realm that's yeah. just amazing. And that's what people need to realize sometimes that they don't see certain things because she mentioned it a moment ago. But when we went to France mm -hmm. those first times, I mean, that, that was part of those intercessions, you know. But when we went and I shared these stories, this one individual, the trans, he was, I went to three different churches and he was their translator, become a dear friend. And 
after the third night of hearing these stories that we were telling, he goes, I just want you to know something. My life was touched by the Spirit of God at the time frame of what you're saying. I just want you to know I've seen that my life has been affected by those intercessions. And it just really is very humbling and it's very confirming. And France and it's was the first nation. Pardon? And France was the first nation. And France, France was the first nation we really went into, yes. That was the first of the intercessions, which is a whole other story within itself. But, but again, we never desired to go to France, didn't want to go to France, but the Holy Spirit spoke it, you know, in a very... I wasn't thinking about me or the intercessions at all. I was hosting a live uh, television show out of Tulsa, Oklahoma for a network that was there. And I was interviewing some guests that were getting ready to go to France as missionaries, just graduating from a school there in Tulsa. And they made one statement, and when they did, it was like the Holy Spirit just struck me right in the face. And they said there are hundred, there, there are thirty six thousand cities and villages in France that have no Jesus preaching church. Well, I'm Southern Baptist in background. I know that on that year, it had been eighty five. Southern Baptist denomination was one hundred and forty years old, and it's taken them one hundred and forty years to get thirty seven thousand churches. And God said He's going to have me responsible to pray until there's a church and. <laughs> In every city and every village, I felt very overwhelmed by that. But I was absolutely captivated by that intercession. So I immediately, we have our churches new, we're in this little rented facility. People are trying to figure out how crazy they think we are or how wonderful they think we are. And I come back going, we're going to France, man. We're all going to France. We're going to reach France. This is the intercession God put on us. So, we had people leave then. They said, we don't care anything about France. I said, I don't care anything about France. I never wanted to go to France. Who cares about France? You know? But God cares. And from that moment, we were just touched by it. And uh, we had to, had to go. And so we've seen lots and lots of churches come up. And those guys keep going. And it's just marvelous. But all of those things birthed in those intercessions and for the nations. Yeah. So, one day I was praying and God said, I want you to read Psalm 23. This is in the midst of these 50 days. And I'm going, God, I don't want to read Psalm 23. Because Psalm 23 <laughs> is the one that's given mostly at funerals. Yeah. And that, I thought, I don't think I want to hear this message. And I said, God, I don't want to. He said, you read Psalm 23. So I did. Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And when I read those words, God said to me, he said, you need to get ready. Kathy's getting ready to go into a coma. She's going to become unconscious. And I said, God, I don't, I don't want to do But he said, again, if you'll do what I've taught you to do, I'm going to walk you through this. So a few, I never thought about how long, but a few days went by. And one day I came home. And uh, when I walked in the living room, I just, all I could feel was death. And I couldn't even go to the bedroom. I just prayed, prayed, walked the floor, prayed in tongues. Again, I don't remember how long, but it was a good season of time. And I prayed, I went in the bedroom, and she's totally unconscious. She's just gray and ashen, and I can't, I speak to her and shake her. And she doesn't wake up, and um, so... I'm continuing to pray, and God told me this was going to happen, and so we just continued to stand on him who was our rock. We continued to stand and say, one minute is long enough for God. That was one of the things that, in the story in Bree's house book, but you know, if it didn't happen now, it had to happen the next minute, and that's what was our believing. If he said it, then we're going to believe it. Yes. So one minute is long enough for God, no matter what today is or what 10 days before has been or three months before has been, here's God. One minute long. That's what one minute is long enough for God. He can change everything in one minute. So anyway, so I spend a considerable amount of time praying. She comes to and she goes, Sam, you're not going to believe. I can't believe what happened. She said, all of a sudden the darkest dark overtook me and I couldn't stop it. And so she would. We would talk and we prayed for some, and then she would go back unconscious. And I fought that for three days. You know, as she would slip back into this state for three days, we fought that spirit of death that was there. And then she came out of it and never had that again. And we've had doctors explain to us the, 
the lack of blood, those things, what are both happening in her body. And anyway, but God again was faithful. And again, we don't, you know, this is something that we had such a leading and knew this was his voice. We just couldn't walk away from it, you know. And I mean, so, so many times, you know, because he said, you just can't take her to the doctor. You know, you just, you just can't do that because they won't, they won't find anything and thus she wouldn't survive. You have to intercede for the nation. So that's what we continue to do. And he would give us these nations and we would pray and magnify God and, and take these next steps. And uh, yeah, he was just good. But one minute, one minute is long enough for God. That's what we kept saying.